Back in Italy, this is going to be the second painting in a series that I'm doing of a recent travel to Florence, Italy. And we are there in October, uh, did quite a few sketches, visited the countryside as well as many parts of Florence. Today's painting is the Piazza della Repubblica. I think I'm saying that correctly. What characterizes this piazza is the giant archway. And I'm doing it, I, I happened to be at this location, uh, the morning was raining, and I found a quiet little alcove that was an entrance to a department store and decided to paint a, a rainy day scene. Uh, rain can be problematic for the watercolorist. You don't want to get your painting wet halfway through and have all kinds of cauliflowers and so on. So you need a little protection. And um, if you're going to be working outside, uh, you can uh, find archways to paint under. Or in this case, I had the alcove of a department store that hadn't opened yet. Anyway, you have to prepare for the worst. Even it, it might not be raining, but threatening rain, it's better to have a little protection. Umbrellas also work, but uh, they're susceptible to wind. So if there's a little bit of wind, it can upset your whole uh, setup. So in this case, I'm, I'm starting with a very light, warm wash, basically building up the silhouette of this archway, trying to get the, the structure uh, with a bit of gradation going from a warmer, lighter hue up above to a darker, cooler hue at the bottom. And I'm leaving white for the sky. And uh, so I'm trying to relate these, these values to that white, make it feel like there's this white is an atmosphere. When you're working outside, you encounter all sorts of things. Uh, I was lucky this morning. It was a quiet morning and the store hadn't opened so I could set up and work with out any disturbance. That's not always the case. And um, it's a, it creates some fun and some frustration sometimes uh, when you're working in the field. But to get the feel of the scene, to get the feel of the atmosphere and the location, nothing really beats working outside. So uh, these that's the main reason I, I like to travel these days is so that I can stand in front of my subject and and see it, experience it, and hopefully translate it into the painting. You see me now working with soft edges uh, through the archway, trying to get a feeling that rain is, or mist has overtaken that area in the back, and building up soft edges and a sense that uh, yeah, there's real depth back there, that, the, that it goes far back. Yeah, uh, the the overall arch is pretty much established now. You can see how it's starting to set up, starting to dry. It's getting lighter as we speak, and a lot of the color is working its way down into the lower third of the the arch, uh, the big piazza. Um, I want to start to build in some darks and some some of the relief the pattern of the columns, the windows, the sculptural elements of this piazza. I'm waiting for the paper to dry to the point where I can do that. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry. And in fact, sometimes having a little bit of moisture to the paper allows you to get broken edges and accidental effects that you would not normally get if you were working on perfectly dry paper. So I'm waiting for that moment to happen and then I'll start to build in the different architectural elements of the big archway. And I had a few onlookers while I was doing this painting. They didn't expect to see a, an artist working on a rainy day, but <clears throat> as they strolled by, they many people were nodding in approval and, and uh, no bellissimos yet, but uh, maybe towards the end of the painting, I'll, I'll get some compliments. You see me now working in the foreground. I was feeling 
a little insecure about the painting and I, I wanted to deal with this foreground before I moved back to the arch. And you see how I'm applying these, the tones, I'm leaving some whites, I'm anticipating sort of a sheen on the surface of the pavers uh, in the foreground. At the same time, I want to build in some reflections of the arch, so, um, following the, the sides and leaving a bit of brightness where the reflected archway will be. And so I'm starting to minimize the white and uh, thinking about how to use that white effectively. The upper section is dried to the point where I can start to work in it with a little bit of dry brush. Um, when you're working in a, a rainy condition or a condition where there's a lot of humidity, your paper inevitably is drying much, much slower. And you have to pace yourself accordingly so that you don't rush into an area that's not really ready to be painted on top of and uh, end up with uh, all sorts of accidentals. Um, I kept testing the paper to make sure that it was dry enough. I used the side of my hand to do that because I feel it's a little more sensitive than the fingertips. And uh, when it reached a point where it felt dry but cool to the touch, I felt I could start to add these um, ideas of shadows and relief uh, that are that uh, make up the decorative aspect of the arch. Of course, there's much more um, detail than I'm accounting for. Remember, it's an overcast day, it's a rainy day. Um, some of that is going to be minimized when you have such a day. Other reasons would be that I want there to be more of a draw to the lower section of the painting. Uh, eventually, I plan to have figures walking through and uh, figures in the reflections, and I would like this part of the painting, the lower third, to have more of a draw than, say, the upper third. The upper third is definitely important, no doubt about it, but the detail is not going to be as <clears throat> abundant in that upper third of the painting. In fact, the way you see it now is probably the way it's going to finish. Um, building in some deeper darks and into the lower um, section of the painting, some of the alcoves and uh, deeper shadows into the columned areas. Um, using a, a very, this is very much a monotone painting. I think I'm using two colors, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for the majority of the painting. Perhaps a little yellow ochre, a little neutral tint as well colors that I seem to go to quite regularly. Uh, in this case, they're being mixed on the palette and not on the paper so that I get a, a grayer result. Here and there you'll see more blue to the gray or conversely more of a warm tone, a brown or a yellow to the gray. Now you can see I'm building up more and more of that relief through dry brush work into uh, the different sculptural elements of this piazza. It's really a magnificent piece of sculpture. I have to say that uh, the scale of it is impressive right away, just as the Duomo was in our first painting. This has a powerful effect. Uh, as soon as you see it, it uh, reminds you of a, of a grand old European city a lot of warm tones to the to the masonry and um, there's a lot of detail too it's in one way it's sort of frustrating that you can't accommodate all the detail because it's it's so attractive to the eye and and uh, lends a, a yet another dimension to the to the whole piece but uh, with painting I feel that um, the statement should be simple. And in this case, it's uh, the Piazza della Repubblica on a rainy day. That rainy day aspect is, is driving the painting. You notice now a lot of the edges uh, to the archway that we started with and uh, to the back background have faded and have a softness to them. 
that was the intention. I want it to feel like it's a misty or even rainy day. And uh, people are walking through, not in the enormous groups that we'll see later on in the day, but on this uh, rainy morning, there were a few people wandering through, some people getting ready for uh, business, but many people just kind of enjoying the quietness of, uh, of the empty square. And that's, uh, that has to do with the mood that I'm trying to depict. You see me now putting in lots of blobs and uh, starting to develop them into figures. Uh, with figures, uh, two things I'll point out. One is uh, you notice that all of their heads are lining up on an equal line. What that is conveying visually is that we are on a flat surface looking ahead down a flat area. So even though uh, some people are very small in the distance, their head is approximately the same level as the head that's in the foreground. It's just that the body in the foreground or in the midground, their bodies are much longer. They come much lower into the painting. If it were going uphill or downhill, um, the heads would rise or fall accordingly. The second thing about people is it's a good strategy to put some in the distance, your major figures in the midground, and some figures very close. Uh, this helps to create the illusion of depth in the painting. So I'm uh, starting to adorn these figures, give them color, give them uh, more detail, give them darker, sharper edges, and accompany uh, them with some reflections. This is helping to draw your eye to the to that area of the painting. My real focus is that family that's walking through the misty area and approaching the arch. You see a couple, a woman uh, with a red jacket and a child kind of running along. So I'm trying for a variety of poses. Uh, some people walking away, some people walking towards us, others traversing the scene. <clears throat> and trying to build up a, a, a feeling of randomness. I don't want it to feel like a like soldiers marching in the same direction. I want there to be various directions and and gestures that are carried by the people. So I give it a little thought and I try to place the brush strokes in a manner that'll describe that. I've also introduced some brighter colors to make that area a little more attention grabbing, especially that red is uh, important to kind of pull our eye towards a specific point. Not only does it function as a garment, but it functions as sort of a, a draw in the painting against all of these grays. Well, I'm continuing to build up uh, some depth in the lower section. It's a balancing act from this point, how much detail to develop, how much to leave out. Um, I want the, there to be a feeling of the surface of the piazza. It's a, all the, the, stro the streets and the alleys and the public areas have, have um, beautiful tile work in Florence. And you'll find that it's entering into most of the paintings that I'm doing. Here I'm making a little more of it, especially where there's an illuminate, illuminated area uh, through the archway. I want you to feel that uh, there's pavers that these people are walking on. And they help with perspective. They also help to draw the eye into the painting. So uh, then they make the reflections feel a little more transparent also when you run a, a, the edge of a stone through a reflection. Instantly it feels more transparent. Some things I'll, I'll finish off the painting with a few highlights uh, to make the overhead light feel a little brighter. Sometimes to make the surface of my figures, their jackets or their ponchos feel wet, I'll add a little bit of white and pull it down with my finger. In this case, it helps to bring the figures forward and give the, the light a little more of a striking quality. Uh, to do that. 
And that's how I'm finishing this painting. The Piazza del Repubblica, the second in a series of paintings of Florence. A rainy day scene. I hope you enjoyed it.